Everybody, welcome back with the Plapper. Platypus is the name, and today we're talking about a gust in October. Okay, it's November, you caught me. Uh, but yeah, we're basically going to go through the build. Um, I did get lucky, and I got this guy on my 50-50. And so, yeah, I kind of wanted to go over how I was building him and why I was building him and kind of how he changes over time. But I would consider him built right now. I'm not really working on him anymore. Besides the fact that I am trying to get his stars and at which point I'll change up some of the skills. But who is August? What does he do? He is a eye patch. He has an eye patch. So I assume he's a pirate of some kind. Um, and this is probably all the booty that he plundered, if you know what I mean. No. Joking aside, though, he is basically a berserker. He goes crazy. He gets extra turns and he kills stuff. He is a breaker, probably the strongest breaker in the game um, by a long shot, I would say, actually. Like, Rawia is really good, but he just does that job and better. Um, Leonide has, like, some fringe use and some stuff, but I don't think he's nearly as, like, generally powerful. Um, although he does have, like, six movement and, like, a like a Tetris piece or something like that. So that could be all right. Um, but what does he do? He ignores block straight up. That is really good for a breaker because you do all double damage. So it's really annoying when your double damage is always getting blocked. Um, by the greens, you know, the defenders. Um, so just ignoring block straight up is already pretty good. Then after you do an attack or you do a standby, you know, just end your turn, you're getting a stack of rage. Once you get the six stacks, it's actually kind of cool. If you get the six stacks and then you use a skill that doesn't end your turn, he'll go into rage burst like immediately. Um, but if you have an attack that, if you're at five, you have an attack that goes you up to six, you get the six stacks, you remove the stacks, you rage burst, you get act again, and the rage burst lasts for two turns. Rage burst is basically just a big attack boost. It converts your magic attack into physical attack. So it, there's rage burst one, two, and three. At level one, it's like 40%. Then at level two, it goes to 75, and then it's like 100. It's like a pretty incredibly massive damage boost, he says, covering that spot. My camera's been so good here for a while. We're just cover his pixel avatar. That's me now. Um, so he gets a huge, huge attack increase, and he gets to act again. So um, ideally, you want to get him up to six stacks as soon as possible, then use an action that doesn't end your turn. He rage bursts. You do a super powerful attack. He gets to act again. You do another super powerful attack, and he can basically kill almost anything in the game. He also has huge AoE attacks. Um, not huge, but he has pretty big AoE attacks, and overall is just an absolute house of a unit. So how did I build him? First, let's take a look at the equipment I am choosing to use here. I'm using the Feast Axe. If the target's HP percentage is lower than the characters when attacking, increase your attack by 20%. Increasing attack by 20% is extra good because this is both physical and magical. So he's increasing, you know, let's say he has a thousand physical attack and a thousand magical attack. He's going up 20% on the physical, right? To 1200 physical and then 1200 magical. But his rage outburst is actually double dipping on this attack. So it's actually more than a 20% a damage increase or attack increase because you're getting the magical attack also into your physical attack. So this is very good. Also, the way he works, he has a lot of skills or at least one skill that will not end the turn when he does it. And so he'll deal a little bit of damage, kind of like Rawia's like sing and you go up and you just kind of like lightly hit someone. That'll lower their HP percentage if you're at full HP, even if it's the 99% and it doesn't end your turn. Now, suddenly, you get this huge boost. The recovering HP when you defeat an enemy, that is relevant, but it's not insane. I, I would not run the axe for that alone. So this is just a super powerful axe. Increases your damage a lot because you get a double dip on that. As for the engravings, I'm using Sword Wand. I'm just trying to get as much physical and magical attack as possible. This character is not designed, and at least in my opinion, to be tanky. You want to kill stuff. I would not say he's a glass cannon. Um, he definitely has, with my current build, a lot of tankiness to him, but it is focused on damage. So we are using the attack and magic defense sword. This isn't the best roll, but it's good enough for now. I actually did like 30 rolls of legends to get even this, so I'm just leaving it. As for the um, trinket here, we're using the, fly the flying blade arm guard. You could probably guess why. Um, this is not a stats thing. It's not like, oh, like you could get something with passive effects that are cool and are good, but what this does is this gives you an instant speed attack. This does give him a stack of rage when he does it, and it doesn't end his turn. So this is basically just getting a free stack of rage, making sure that he could do his thing even faster. 
Um, whereas this is not an active attack, so this really won't do it, giving someone a speed buff. And you could do it with the Prairie Fire. The issue is this is an eight turn cooldown, whereas this only has a two turn. So you could do this every other turn twice. You know, you do it once on the first turn or whatever, and then you can't do it the following turn, but then the turn after that, you could do it again. Um, so this is pretty good. Again, before actively attacking, for each child traversed, you get extra attack and defense. Attack buffs are extra good on this character because he gets the double dip with the Rage Outburst. And honestly, you, with all these extra actions, you're probably just moving around. Just don't forget until don't forget to actually move before you attack if you don't have to and let's get into his skills so this is one that i think is going to drastically change over the course of a game i'm going to move down here i think boom you got to move all over they're, they're utilizing their space here so i think this will drastically change over the course of your how many stars you have on them um and so this character if you have him at one star and then you upgrade them to five stars over time. I think it'll take a lot of Castilia, Castalia, Castalia to kind of make him pop um, because his, er, his one star skills are, you know, he has skills that are good at one star. Then he has skills that I think are good later. Starting at rank one, um, this one is definitely a pick your favorite personal preference. Like none of, neither of these are on my bar right now. Um, however, I just like having access to a shield break ability if I want to have it. Um, can't be blocked, which is irrelevant, but you increase your attack by 30% when attacking enemies with a shield. It doesn't come up all that much, but it's just something I like. I wanted to have access to, whereas Knightly Spirit is going to be more generically good, but I don't think it's going to be good enough to actually make it onto the bar most times. So I'd rather have a situational ability than one that's probably just never going to be used, even though I do like Knightly Spirit. Once you get to rank three, this is going to be the first one that I think early game, you know, early stars versus late stars are going to change pretty dramatically. Um, I think this ability is better. Warm touch. When you perform an active attack, you deal piercing damage equal to 15% of their current HP. I assume that this is like, it takes a snapshot before you attack them. So if they're at full HP, it'll do 15% of their max. Not like you hit them for 70% and then it does 15% of their remaining 30%. Uh, so I assume the snapshots initially. However, this can only be activated one time per round. Um, meaning even if you get act again, it's still the same round. So it's only going to activate on each character one time per round. However, you do also heal and you can trigger it on this. This Sorry, this ability can only be triggered one time per round. But if you hit multiple targets, it will trigger on all of them. So this is just a great damage increase. It's a great heal um, and it's percent based damage. So it's just good overall. I would use this. However, as you can see, I don't have this because we're at one star right now, not even two stars at two stars. I might move over to that, but I'm not sure yet. But the most important thing here is you get the support ability. August gets two stacks of rage. So normally you get one stack at the end of the turn. If you use this, you get two instead of one. However, you get a big physical shield here, equal to 60% of your physical attack plus your magic attack. I mean, this is this is like roughly, if we take a look here, like this is not quite like his whole health bar or anything like that, but it is about 60, 70% of his health bar, I feel like. Um, and you get damage reduction too. And then if you're injured, you gain a stack of, you get a third stack of rage and damage too. This part is never triggered for me even once. I've never had him injured and then use this skills. Frankly, it's just like he usually kills what he's targeting. He doesn't sit there and get attacked that much. Um, but I mean, it is still like this is still icing on the cake, right? If he is injured, go ahead and take your third stack of rage and then you get damage two for two turns. So then your following turn, you'll probably be ready to do the full rage thing. But the damage reduction too in the shield is great for tanking and it just generates more rage than you could passively super good ability however once you get start like once you get up to rank wrong button once you get up to rank uh even twos and you start with two stacks of rage i think i might take it off and definitely when you get the four and you start with four stacks of rage i just don't think it's going to be worth it at that point anymore um i think you just you basically get to cash out sooner rank five is also one that i think would change once you get about to four star again and like again that's why i'm saying like right now i'm happy with the skills i have but there's already two Castell Castalia I would want to use at four stars. So who knows? Um, but this reduces damage taken by 15%. And then when attacked, you gain a stack of rage twice per round. He doesn't counter attack. He just takes a reasonable less amount of damage and he starts building his rage. Again, if you're starting with four rage, you're probably just going to want to take the strength activation where when you heal, you heal more and you get damage too for a turn. 
And then you're getting damage too from this, so you probably don't need the damage too from this. Um, and so you're probably going to want to run both of these instead. Plus, this gives you an attack percent increase as well, which is huge. Once you get up to rank 7, these are both pretty bad. Um, situationally, you might want to use attack command. I'm pretty much never using Terror, Tearing Whirlwind because of his basic skill. His best skill is his basic skill. We'll actually go back and talk about that afterwards. Also, here we go. Rank 9. I know I'm recommending all the opposite skills, and it continues here. I like this ability a lot. Extermination, 100% damage. When attacking enemies, you additionally consume one energy from the target. I like the control aspects of this. However, this isn't a control character. I I, I mostly get these because it has the right visual, right? Like, it's obviously, like, his special artwork for his little skills. Um, and it is a cool attack, but charged attack is just really good on him. 100% um, damage and increases the damage of the next skill by 15%. If if you're going to use an attack, making it so your next attack does more damage is huge on a character that's all about taking extra turns. So with his uh, dash ability, you'd probably use something like his swift dash ability, get up to them, hit them, then use your ability to charge it. Then you go into, you know, rage burst mode, and then you use a big hit after that. Um, so I think it's probably better. Although I like this ability, but it's not like broken or anything like that. There are characters that have things like this. Once you get to rank 11, I, it, this is, I was, I would say this is a pick your favorite thing, but I actually think Overlord's Roar is worse. This is the one I got. I, but I, when you're going through the tutorial or the, whatever, the story mode with the gust, he, his August had Wrath of Devastation. Mine had Overlord's Roar. So here's the thing. This is really heavy damage, and it's great. This actually just kills shit like crazy. But your main skill that you're using all the time, Wrath, is like so... It, it, it really is like expensive to keep using all these skills. And so I never really found time to use Overlord's War. Only when I forced myself to use it or I use an ability that specifically like increased the like uh amount of uh, energy my character had like i boosted them and then it's pretty good for single target damage but i just it, it didn't feel particularly necessary there was dispelling three buffs is pretty nice but there's other ways to dispel buffs i think this is a good skill but i don't think it's like an insane skill i think wrath devastation is actually kind of an insane skill it only does 90 percent damage but it is a huge area it does dispel buffs before attacking and then when you're in Outrage, you have a 50% chance of inflicting stun. So basically, this becomes your AoE skill. And then your other skill, which just does have AoE, but also just like better attack, is... um, oh, I can't even take a look at what that one does. Um, It basically gets stronger, right? This goes from 40% damage to 80% damage. So I think it's like 160%, right? So you do the whole thing and you're lowering their defense and you're doing great damage. So this is kind of... Even though this has AoE to it, it's mostly your single target skill. Again, you could switch in your Crumbling Smash if you really need to. So even though I like Overlord's Roar, I end up not using it almost ever. Um, so I think Wrath Devastation for that really cool control thing is probably just insane. Plus, um, do they both give you attack? They both give you an attack 3%, so it could be worth taking both of them. Um, so I do kind of recommend as he gets up to higher star levels, right? You take Warm Touch, you take Strength Activation, you take probably Charge Attack, and then Wrath Devastation. So pretty much the exact opposite of everything that I've taken. However, when you're at one star... If you want him to be usable, you need Hassle. You can't really... He doesn't really function without Hassle. Even when he gets the two, like, uh, Rage at the start of the combat, I still think Hassle is going to be really powerful in that situation because it's still tanky. You're still not... You're not as alpha-focused, although maybe that's when I'll switch here. I haven't decided yet. Um, Contempt is still good because he's not... He's taking damage, right? And so you get this. You become tankier. You get damage reduction. This is more damage reduction. You're getting Rage that way. Um, and so I actually do, and plus extermination, it, this one is more just because I love it. But yeah, these two skills here, I think you're going to probably want all four of them over the course of his career, unless you pull them straight up to like two or three stars, at which point you could probably skip these and just go over here for all in damage. Um, Castle is kind of a cool ability though. It does feel nice, but it's really defensive on a character that mostly cares about not being defensive. So yeah, that is the build. This is how we play him. And, uh, yeah, let's actually go into a fight. All right, we're going to give him a little bit of help here. Um, just so he doesn't look embarrassing when we do this. And this one does damage reduction to attack. All right, so we're going to throw this. Bada bing. 
We're gonna hassle, get our shield up. You wanna stay next to her to get your defense and stuff. Hopefully that counts as two. That's two hits, but that's only one attack. I'm actually not sure. Let's take a look. So we should be at one, two, three, four, five, hopefully. He is at five, so that does count. Okay. So now we're about to go sicko mode. Um, let's go ahead and give him a crit increase as well. And then, you know what? Yeah, go ahead and do... I don't even want you to hit them, honestly. I just want you to put down your thing and feel good about yourself. There you go. All right. So now we are at still five. But what we could do is... This will put us up to six. We actually got happiness too, which is not like super relevant. But if we go... How do we want to hit these guys? I want to hit you back. And now we could swing like this, right? Now we did get our rage burst, right? So if you take a look here, we consumed it. And we've got the rage outburst. Again, this is only 40%. It goes up to 100% as you get there. Um, so we're not exactly jacked right now, to say the least. But let's go ahead and do this. Boom. And then now we get another turn that was that did end our turn, but now we could use this skill, which I couldn't show you early. 160% damage and then 80% damage to other enemies within one tile, and it knocks them back one tile. So then we can come here, right? I mean, again, look at this guy has 17,000 HP, right? This ain't no joke. I wonder if you're gonna kill them like this because mm, not quite it's gonna knock this guy back but i do think that this will just be better again you like i just never have enough energy to use this skill i could probably use something to make it viable but i just don't really want to and you could attack here but no, no, no. we're using our big boy hit oops got him and then we got poco here to hopefully keep us alive we did um and he still gets his rage outburst which is super important let's just go ahead and Keep stacking them back up. And then you stand by. And then, look, he's still got... He's still rage outbursting for a whole other turn. So he's still got 5,000 attack, which isn't the highest I've had, but it is it is pretty high. And so if we actually use this... Again, because you could start stacking rage. So we're already up to three stacks of rage while we have the uh rage burst going right so you could have like you can't have multiple rage outbursts going at the same time but you do get to have like after you burst your rage you get to start building that rage stack up again which is really good because then it's again like double dipping on the damage and then you could probably just attack him to death here just a casual seven thousand. and again that's like no crits this guy isn't like this, this is a one-star version. He gets so much better than this. But yeah, that, that's the basic, like, idea, right? He gets to just go multiple times in a row. And, like, as you can see here, if we started with two more stacks, like, he's at four, right? He would have been at six if he was at two-star, and he would have gotten another turn in that last one. Let's actually take a look here, though. I do want to see how he does against the... Because uh, this guy is a... Uh, this guy is my specialty, right? So go ahead and do this. Yep. So now you can dash this guy back. Oh, we're going to smack this guy so hard. I don't know if we're going to kill him, but we're going to try. Swift. And then we have three energy. So yeah, this guy's fucking dead, bro. Check this out. Oh, he's not dead. Damn it. What am I going to do? Oh, wait. I have another turn, loser. Wasn't even close. Like, we did 25,000 damage that last hit. See, so if we don't want him to die, we could then use his extra turn to just run away. Or you could do what August does, all right? You could just go in and get yourself killed. And that's what we're going to do here. But yeah, basically, this is how the character can work. Um, you, I find him to be one of the most fun characters in the game. Although, I know some people think he's kind of boring because he just, like, hits a lot. But there's, like, a fun aspect of a Berserker-style character I really like. Um, but that's basically the build. That's kind of what he does. I really like this character. Um, he, I'm not going to say he's my favorite character they've added to the game. But, I mean, he's up there, man. He's up there. Uh, I do like him a lot. I think Simona and... Uh, I think Simona might still be my favorite. Gloria, Simona, and uh, August. Those are three of my favorites. Anyway, 
guys, that's all for this one. Thank you very much for Platypuses per Platypus. I'll see you on the flip flops. Bye. Platypus on the rise. Watch the news go.